Okay, guys, so we just learned a little bit about Yayoi Kusama, who was from Japan and moved to New York to explore her art. Um, and she did something with um, nets, which, as we read about, um, using polka dots. And she is also known as the Princess of Polka Dots. And today we're going to be inspired by her pumpkin um, paintings. And we're going to start by making our own pumpkin. So what we're going to do is we're going to draw a curved line near the middle of the page that kind of goes up and comes down like that, a semicircle line. Then it's going to curve in and curve back out so that it's a little bit wider than the first curve that we made. We're going to come around and then go back up. And it's okay if it's not perfect because, as you know, we're not drawing geometric shapes like circles, squares, triangles, um, ovals. We're drawing a organic or freeform shape a shape that comes from nature. So this shape is not necessarily perfect. Um, it is just a shape that is irregular or not perfect. So what we're going to do next is we're going to then draw a line that kind of comes out of the top of the pumpkin and curves over like this. The same thing on the other side. And we're going to follow the same shape that we made the first time and make it connect at the bottom. We're going to do the same thing on this side, make it connect at the bottom. So we have two um, pumpkin-like um, wedges or um, curves on our pumpkin so far. Then we're going to do one more, one on this side, and we're going to follow, and it's a little bit skinnier than the last one, and I'm going to do the same thing over here, and it's going to connect at the bottom. So there's my um, first pumpkin that I drew, and I'm going to add a little stem to it, and I can draw the stem with another organic type line, and it can come in and and go back down. So there's my pumpkin. Now the next the next thing I'm going to do is I am going to get a coloring tool. So I'm going to use um, a marker. If you have an orange marker, that would be great. If it's not orange, that's okay too. It doesn't have to be. Um, and we're going to start by coloring in our pumpkin with the orange marker. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to kind of trace these lines and I'm going to um, create the pumpkin first. I like to trace over my lines and make them nice and smooth. And then I'm going to color in my pumpkin. And when I color my pumpkin, I'm going to kind of go in one direction. I'm going to kind of keep going with this shape that I've used because that's going to kind of give the illusion of it curving. And I'm going to keep going until I fill all the space in. So this this kind of mar this marker is actually running out it looks like, but this out outer edge of my pumpkin Yeah, this marker is pretty much almost done it looks like. And if you don't have markers, that's fine. We can do this with whatever medium you'd like to do it. Um, I just chose markers because markers are um, bold. So they're a bolder color. But you can make your crayon bold as well. Um, I'm going to keep going with this marker as best I can. Kind of going with that shape that I made. Do the same thing over here. And keep going. And it's kind of getting lighter. It's a good thing I started on the outside because I'm getting lighter as I go in. Because um, this would be the shiny part of the pumpkin. This would be the closest part to us anyway. Um, and yes, I know my marker's fading. But that's okay. I can go back to it with, I can go over it with another one if I have another marker leader. But like I said, I can always go back over it with crayon if I need to. Um, I kind of like the way it's looking though. I kind of like that faded look. Kind of looks kind of neat. Um, kind of interesting to me that way. So there's the orange part and I'm going to add my stem. My stem is probably going to be brown. So I'm going to add my stem here with a brown, a light brown if I have one. Let's see. Um, 
be looking to see what I have. I have a brown marker here. Yeah, this one's kind of a lighter brown, which is good. And I'm going to just kind of color in my stem with my marker. Now, this does not look anything like her artwork because her artwork was filled with black polka dots. So this is where our black marker is going to come in. So we're going to get a black marker, black crayon, or black colored pencil. And we're going to be inspired by the artwork of Yayoi Kusama. We're going to start with um, spots that get smaller as they go towards the top and then larger as they come down. And then at about the center, we'll make the bigger polka dot and then we'll get smaller again. And we'll continue this, kind of following the curve and the same thing we did in the first section. We'll continue making our polka dots just like Yayoi Kasama um, did on hers. So we're going to keep going with the polka dots with this pattern that she did on this first section of the pumpkin. I'm going to continue to do similar um, things on the outside. I'm going to kind of go in and follow the same shape um, of the pumpkin that I did before and continue with that dotted pattern. But I'm going to get smaller over here on these this next section. I'm going to just change it up a little bit and make these polka dots smaller. Some of them are kind of in that curve, so I'm not going to put them there. Okay, do the same thing in this section over here. Kind of go down the middle. Want them to be circles though, because she made circles, not ovals. Smaller ones. Now I believe she used this as a form of meditation. She was just kind of drawing those dots and just kind of relaxing her body as she was doing them. Um, it's tedious, but it's very repetitive, which kind of is like when we breathe, that breathing that we do is a repetitive thing. So it kind of relaxes you as you do it. Um, and what I'm going to do, I think what I'm going to do here is I'm going to kind of um, go back over here and I'm going to put some smaller dots right on that very first line where I made my pumpkin, um, the first shape of my pumpkin, just to kind of accentuate that line, to put an accent on that line so you can see it so it stands out. And I'm going to probably continue to do that throughout the rest of my pumpkin. So I'll be back in just a minute. I'm going to finish up my pumpkin. I don't want to sit here and um, make you watch me do the whole thing. So I'm going to let you guys get to work. And I'm going to bring back my finished pumpkin in just a moment. Now I want you to notice something about my dots. Um, when I do this, I don't just randomly put the dots. I'm kind of putting them in rows um, or lines. They're like dotted lines because that's kind of how she did hers. Um, so I want to kind of be like her um, the way she did hers. I kind of want to make it look like the way she did hers. So she kind of made these dots in a row or a line so that it looked like a dotted line. And it just made it so interesting. And she was the first one to do something like this. Um, 
and she is still alive today, which I know that's a question you guys often ask me, is the artist still alive? Well, she is, she is alive, and she lives in that mental institution in Japan um, for her, um, the problems that she has with her, um, her obsessive compulsive um, behaviors and some of the other things, which is probably why her style is so controlled like this. Um, and this is just a way that she can control her thoughts and um, probably meditate, like I said, on what she's doing as she's creating her picture. And as I looked back, I'm noticing I could put a few more um, dots in there and just to kind of finish that off. Now, I wouldn't say that this is finished. I'm going to think about what I want to do to the rest of it. Um, this is a, a decent stopping point for the first part of our lesson. And um, then we'll get on to the next part of our lesson um, in the next um, lesson. So hopefully you've gotten this far and this will be the beginning of your picture. This is our foreground and the first part of our picture um, and we'll get started on some more tomorrow.